Hey y'all, um, we had a lot of footage uh, for the beginning of this episode, but we don't even know what you're going to see anymore. But we've been boondocking out here in the middle of nowhere, Idaho, with some friends, and one of our friends just suddenly passed away out here. Right now, it's not our story to tell. Um, the reason we're telling you anything is because you're part of our community. We want to keep things real with you. This is real life. So out of respect to our friend, we will get permission to share when the time is right. And you may see it in this episode even, what we can share. But right now, all we can tell you is this is tough. Um, but God is with us. And he helped us through this situation, and we're praying for our friends who remain, that they are given strength. And we're sorry to be so vague, because you know that's not us. We give you all the nitty-gritty details, but again, as Sean and I discussed, it's not our story to tell yet. If we get permission to share any of this, then we will, and you will see it, and you will hear what we can share. But for now, just know whatever else comes in this episode... Today, God gave us all strength, and he was with us and helped us, and we lost a good friend, lost him to this stage of life. Right. It's 1055 at night, and we just got word about 1030, I think, just a few minutes ago that mm -hmm. he didn't make it. The other point we want to make is... We are in the middle of Idaho. The only thing that works out here is Starlink. You can use your cell phone with Starlink, um, and that is the only way we can get through to 911. And we were 17 mm -hmm. minutes from the hospital. And um, when he called 911, they wanted a street address. We're mm -hmm. boondocking in the middle of nowhere. You can't give a street address, so he had to give coordinates. Longitude, latitude. I said, can't you trace my phone? And they said, no. And I said, oh, I'm going through Starlink. That's probably why. Ironically, you know, earlier today, there was apparently a solar flare. And they shut down on purpose the Starlink network. I'm not smart enough to know all the specifics, but it didn't work for a while. At least it started working, thank God, when we needed them the most. Um, he still passed away, but you need the professionals here you need to fight for their life and so the right people got here and that's all I can say at this time right and it was dark so um, two of us had to go up to the road because you know to at least shine flashlights so mm -hmm. they could at least know where to turn and you you never prepare for a situation like this it's no. just horrid and you just feel sick about it and you're devastated for your your friend that Remains. lost their spouse yes it's just it's not good no. we all know that death and life happen but it's the part of life that you don't want to yeah. be part of your experience and especially for our good friend who lost their spouse that's We've lost people before. Y'all know we have. We've lost many family members before, but we have never been in a position to lose mm -hmm. a spouse. Obviously, we've never been married before, and obviously, you she's still married here. married before each other. Sorry, yeah, we've never been married before each other, and maybe that's not something you would have known anyways, but obviously, we're still here, so I can't tell you the kind of pain that comes from losing a spouse. Some of you may know. I can tell you what it's like to lose family. I can tell you what it's like to lose loved ones. I cannot tell you what it's like to lose a spouse. So all I know is God is big enough to handle this. And that's the only advice that I can offer because I have not been through this. And the other thing y'all are probably wondering is, yes, we're boondocking. So, yes, there's a rig out here that will need attention. Yeah, need to be moved eventually. And, you know, there's only one left right now. It's just a whole logistic yeah, I mean, I don't want to call it, it is a nightmare. It's yeah. just worst case scenario happened. That doesn't mean that you freeze up and you don't go live your life, but you have to be aware that life can take a dark and ugly turn and what are you going to do in case that happens? This is not 
a motivational video. This is not a how-to video. This is about our dear friend passing. However, if there's anything to learn from this, it's that if you can take some basic rudimentary steps to be prepared, just in case, let people know where you are. Have some way of communicating. I get wanting to be out in the middle of nowhere because that's where I am and I love it normally. But you got to be able to communicate with somebody. Smoke signals aren't going to do it. Every once in a while you need the modern world and you need to make sure you're prepared for that in any circumstance. Yeah, that, so. We're switching hands. And then um, one other thing, you know, if you have pets, then you have to think of them too. So, um, and a lot of times me and Matthew booned up by ourselves. We happen to be mm -hmm. with friends this time and another couple's with us too. So we had a lot of help. And then when you know things go on, there was a tent camper down the road who used to work for the sheriff's department. So he stepped in and helped everybody did what they could this was a team effort yeah to help until the authorities got here and even when the authorities got here people were still helping and yes. so we're taking care of the the pets um right now and stuff like that but that's scary to think about if you were like totally by yourself you wouldn't have yeah. any help but there is preparation there are steps you can take somebody should somebody always knows where we are and that's all the specifics we're going to give. But somebody always knows where we are. Yeah. Um, we don't call. We're not little children. But they do always know where we are. Um, but there was a huge team effort in this. And do I have to say to uh, the boys in blue who came and the also... Because they were the first ones to come on the scene. Right. And then there was one single officer. And then there was more. There were at least one more... And then there were, uh, the second one came with the paramedics, who I believe were out of the fire department. And to all of them, we told them and we're telling, if any of them happen to be watching, thank you for all your efforts. They did not shy. They did not skimp on efforts. They give it everything they could. Again, we're not focusing on our friend in this because we don't have permission to talk about right. their story. If we can, then it'll be our honor to tell you about them. All right, y'all, it's been a few days since um, our friend passed away, and um, we're just going to give you a little update of what's been happening and what's been going on with us. So we do have permission to let you know uh, our friend is Ed, and his wife's name is Dora. You may know them. It's a Good Life RV is the YouTube channel. They have put years of their life devoting to their cherished community. So we can backtrack a little bit and provide a little more detail as to what happened. Um, yeah, we were all sitting outside in our chairs just talking. Like we said, we're here with another couple. And um, Ed just told Dory he was going to go inside and he never came back out. And so that's when everybody started the, what, medical efforts? Yeah, medical efforts were provided until the professionals could get here and as we said previously they took over and did a phenomenal job gave mm -hmm. it everything they had ultimately ed still passed and they had two dogs and that left door and the two dogs um she contacted obviously her son and family where they're originally from and her son was able to fly in the next day. And then I think on Thursday, because this happened on Tuesday, Thursday, they were able, they left and they were headed back to the state that they're from. Um, I don't know if they want that information disclosed, but um, yes, yeah, so they were able to get the RV out of here. And Dora does know how to tow. She said that was one thing her and Ed made sure each of them knew how to do in case there was an emergency the other one could still tow but it was a phenomenally poor idea to have her go by herself so her son flew in even though dora knew how to tow her son flew in because she needed help to get um you know some help driving the rv back home mm -hmm. yep and they made it home as of the time right. of this recording they are home with family and what we know is they are going to be doing a tribute video for Ed um, on their channel. It's a Good Life RV. We will link 
their channel below. So if y'all would like to go over there and give the family some love and prayers, it would really appreciate it. I mean, when you boondock with friends and y'all are you RV with them in an RV park and you part ways, you're like, that's the great thing about RV life. You can see them again. Unfortunately, this was a death and you don't get to see that person again. So it was a totally different feeling. We were very sad when Dora and her son left because we just saw the RV come in and now it's leaving and we didn't get that much time with them. They literally came in that Tuesday and he passed Tuesday night. So the only time we got with them was tragedy and now yeah. that stays with you. And mm -hmm. it's like we've said before about losing other people in our lives. Sudden deaths, I think, and we think, are right. the hardest. It's like somebody gets up and leaves in the middle of a conversation, and then that's it. It's over. And we had our other friends still here with us, Pee Wee and Martha, and they were going to leave Friday, but they decided to stay a few more days. So we were still able to be here with some friends and not be totally isolated dealing with this. But yeah. just love on the people that you have in your life because it's just sometimes it can just end suddenly and to that note i just repeat one thing that we said in the first clip you saw that i remember wherever you are please make sure no matter how far away you are oh i'm an hour from civilization fine have a way to communicate i can't stress that enough don't be hard-headed have a way to communicate it's not wise to go any other route you're currently watching Dora and her son David going home to his home. Unfortunately, y'all, time just doesn't stop for us to totally sit down and process everything that just happened, as much as we wish it would. The video that follows shows our real life after Dora left, and even though at times you're going to see some smiles and hear some laughter, please just know that through it all, we do dearly miss our friend Ed and are always praying for Dora. Ooh, it smells good out here. <laughs> All right, y'all, this is our first time using the Blackstone in this location. In quite a while, actually. I know. Well, we used it at Indian Rocks. Did we? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was the first time we used it, I think, in quite a while. <laughs> All right, well, it's the first time with this kind of view, so. Yeah, and we're a little sad because where our trucks parked is where our friends were. Yeah, just a little bit beyond that is where they were yeah just a little solemn now but it's a Friday and this campground is busy and Matthew's making pork and fried rice teriyaki we tried a different one because we couldn't find our original one it's California Olive Ranch I hope it's good I hope it's good too did because you, we got to eat it did you taste it before you put it on there a little bit and how did it taste? Not bad. Okay. But it needs, stuff like teriyaki usually needs to be cooked first. I don't think it tastes the same raw as it does when it's cooked. Good to know. That view is just so amazing. Like you're cooking in a pitcher. Mm-hmm. Y'all. We're in the middle of nowhere boondocking and Matthew done broke the toilet seat. You did it! I was down here checking out something on the computer and all of a sudden I heard boom. And I'm like, wait a minute. It's a soft closed <laughs> toilet lid. You know, the very top of it. The one that covers the whole tank and everything. He used it first and then I went in after him. And then I looked back at the toilet seat after it made the noise. Cause like he said, it's a soft close and it's all off kilter. And I'm like, Matthew, and he came in there and he said, you raised it up and the plastic, it has plastic hinges. And he's like, how did I, how did you break it? I said, I didn't break it. I'm little. Listen, he man, <laughs> you broke it. And then, so Matthew's like, oh, no problem. Let me look on Amazon. $93. I said, we can deal with it. It still covers the bowl. <laughs> $93. Is everything got to be so darn expensive? I mean, does, come on. How does it break? It's a soft close. All you do is you get it started a couple inches yeah. and then it just, no, ours went all the way down. I'm like, how did she slam the Maybe lid? if we're brave enough, we'll show you what it looks like, but. You don't need to see we'll a just... toilet. You know what it looks like. Yeah, he broke it. You. 
Hey y'all. Hello. So we are getting to explore today. It's Saturday. Mm -hmm. And there are like 50 something trailheads here just in the Ketchum area, right? There's a lot of trails, a lot of mountain trails. So um, I think the name of our trail is Milner Lake. If you to insist Prairie on Lake. telling them, yeah, something like that. Let me see. Minor Lake and oh. Prairie Lakes Trail. But anyways, um, it was 30 something this morning, but we're not gonna carry our big jackets. We're debating on whether to take the raincoats. There's no clouds in the sky, so that's where Yet. we're at. Yet. Mm -hmm. This is Idaho. It can always rain. Yeah. All right, y'all, we are gonna start our hike at Minor Lake and Prairie Lake Trail. We There were 50 trails, and apparently we picked the popular trail. Every trail around here seems to be popular, y'all, and this is our first trail we've done that's designated hard. So we'll see if we make it. Right. All right, y'all, first creek crossing, see if she can do it. Nobody said it was safe, they just said that's the crossing. Come on. No. You can do it. It's Bear Grills, everybody. Don't go in the water. All right, y'all, we're starting to get the views. As I said, we're in a gulch. Look at that. All right, another creek crossing. Let's see if she can do it. Creek crossing alert. Oh, that's cheating. Boo. No, I can still go in. Okay, all right, it's still adventurous. <laughs> all right, y'all, let me show you around. Look at this view. And this isn't even as good as it gets, y'all. It gets a lot better than this. So I've been told. All right, y'all. Looks like we're going through a tree war zone here. Yeah, I don't think the rangers have gotten up to this part yet. My goodness, Matthew. How are we going to get by this? Well, let me show you how it's done. Actually. That's what I was thinking. Go through the trees. Oh, you're gonna go. Watch and learn, folks. Watch and learn. See if he'll do a log dance for us. Okay. Only a few more to go. Oh my goodness, y'all. It's like a tree war zone. Don't stand up. All right, good. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's go under this one together. Oh no, look what's up ahead. I don't think we can go under that one. No, we're not doing the marine crawl. Oh, I think you might can go around it. I might can go over it. Uh, me and the peeps are going around. What'd you do? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Trail closed to motor vehicles, so I guess that answers that question. Not that it's wide enough for anything, but payoff number one. I mean, big payoff. I think that's where the trail goes, but we're gonna go down here because we earned it. Don't mind me, I'm just stumbling all over the place. Look at this. And this is a smaller lake? It looks pretty big. This is the smaller lake, is yes. the Prairie Lake? No. Yes. Yes, this is Prairie Lake, and what we're going to go to is Minor Lake. This is nice. It really is. A mountain lake, y'all. A true mountain lake. And it's pretty shallow, too. And we want to dedicate our hike today to our beloved friend, Ed. Who was supposed to be with us here today with his wife, Dora. Dora, we're praying for you, and we really wish Ed was here. So look at this part of the trail. It's, we're on the bitter edge. I mean, it's not a cliff, but it's a big drop off. It adds some character to the hike, I like it. Does that work better? All these rocks are loose. I don't want to do this. They're slippery. Oh my goodness, they're really slippery. Good job. Uh, John. 
Yo, look. Matthew helped me across. Not really. Look, I sunk in that hole. Did that you... hole right there. The one we didn't know was there. Did you not see the hole? Did you not see the hole? I wasn't looking. I was holding your hand. <laughs> Yo, I went up to there. Oh. It's his fault. It's not my fault. Don't let him help you cross the creek. Now, you think I could wash my shoe off in here? Yes. That's called the dirty boot shuffle. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here is the second lake. This is Minor Lake. I told you it was bigger, and it almost looks like a moon crater or one of these asteroid craters, doesn't it? Look at this. What do you think about it? So a crater all the way around except for where we came through at, but it's another mi uh, mountain lake. I'm not sure why they call it Minor Lake, because it's not minor. But it's not much bigger than the other one either. And there must be a history behind it, but there's a cool breeze. This is every bit as beautiful as you think it is and yeah, more. Yeah, it's gorgeous, y'all. Look how clear the water is. <laughs> y'all, it's like I'm walking in a Christmas tree farm. Look how neat this is. Look at that. It's awesome. She's happy. And then let's pan up here to the boulder field. Hey, you need a rock? There it is, found it. Look how cute it is. Ooh, that's sharp. Wow, you'd pay a lot of money for that elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's show them the whole tree. There it is, tall as Sean. tree farm. Yo, the trail gets real interesting. Look at this. It's like a dugout stream. Look at all these rocks. And by interesting, I don't mean a good kind of interesting, it's just weird. Oh, looky, looky, it's a waterfall crossing. Let me take you on this side. Look at that. It is a waterfall creek crossing. Uh-oh. All right, y'all, I showed you the creek crossing down there, the waterfall creek crossing there, Sean, in the periphery. There are more. Isn't this beautiful? Absolutely amazing. And Sean found a way to cheat. Yay, Sean. That's our crossing. We're not going to cross down yonder at the actual waterfall. Cheater. I'm not a cheater. Do you want to see us go over the waterfall? No, no, thank you. All right, jump for your life. Get it to the bitter edge and then jump. Come on, will she break a leg? Hey, she got it, look at that. Y'all have heard it before. Watch that next step. It's a doozy, because it leads to a waterfall. All right, let's zoom on in and see this waterfall. There she is. Look at that. It goes up from there and down. So if there's one thing I know about the return trail, um, there's a lot of boulders, a lot of big rocks on this one. This is actually pretty tame compared to what we just did. Yeah. This is crazy. How are you supposed to cross this? She said, how are you supposed to cross this? Put it on me and let me show you. <laughs> let the pros do it. Come on. I don't want to. Sean, you gotta get across or you turn into a trail hermit. I don't want to. Put your put your other arm out and use your stick. You're almost there. That feels squishy. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I see. You know, we're gonna head up to that island where Sean is and then scurry across like little rabbits.
ready? Yes. Wet. It's very slippery. Give me your hand. Now pull. There you go. Yay! Sean no. got it. I do not recommend this trail. <laughs> Final thoughts on this trail. Tell me a highlight and a low light. The highlight was walking by the creek and the lakes. Yeah, I'd say I'd have to agree. And the low light was all of the log crossings, all of the, and I don't just mean like step over them, all of the creek crossings, which could be this big or 15 feet wide, and all of the uh, boulders and stuff that we have to mm -hmm. go over. Other than that, I mean, they did say it was a hard trail, and I thought, mm -hmm. a 10 mile trail? How is that that hard? But I guess because they don't keep up with it. Yeah, it was like a gazillion, majillion, it's not a word, creek crossings, and I got wet at the end, so I'm not happy. <laughs> yeah, it'll dry off. But I'm glad we had the experience, even mm -hmm. though it wasn't a great, great trail. It had some good views. We met some really fun people yeah. on the way. And we can't give you the stats right now because we have no internet. So we'll give you the stats when we get back. And my phone is at 9%. The next time I do a trail this big, I need some kind of a battery bank because my phone can't handle this much. Right. All right, yo, we're tired. <laughs> Here are the final stats on this monster. 11.83 miles which is almost two miles longer than the longest trail we've ever done so far. So, and we actually feel better than our last trail. Our feet hurt, but we feel better. Not as many things hurt after this one than the last one. Elevation gain, a total of 1,880 feet gained in elevation. And calories, 3,533 calories burned wow. each. That's, now that is a health program but mm -hmm. this is a brutal trail. <laughs> it is. It's ranked hard on all trails, we're like, eh. I thought a 10 mile trail, why is that hard? We find out. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. They have cones here, so we couldn't drive to the cemetery, but this is the Ketchum Cemetery. And they have a special guest here. Yeah, we're gonna go see somebody's grave, a really famous person. Yeah, we were gonna drive in here and apparently they paved it so you're not allowed to drive. And we can walk on the grass. <clears throat> okay. This is the nicest cemetery lawn I've ever seen. Wow, nice plush green grass. And this grass is like, it feels like carpet, y'all. Do y'all remember that shag carpet from the 70s? That's what it feels like. Man, this stuff is nice. Here it is, y'all. Let me zoom in for you. Maybe Matthew can get the phone if you can't see it. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway. He's the famous Arthur. Arthur. Yep. And he leaves quite a legacy. Here, because he finished a poem here. I think where the bell tolls. Is this his wife? I don't know. That's Mary Welsh Hemingway. It must be because of the dates. Yeah, and then here's Ernest Hemingway. So this is whose grave we were coming to see. All right, y'all. Um, we're wrapping up our time here in Ketchum, but we're gonna backtrack a little bit before we got to this boondocking spot. We showed y'all in our previous episode that lovely RV park we got to stay at. I think it was Meadows RV Park in Haley. Mm -hmm. The reason we were there is because it is the only game in town i think for a privately owned campground with full hookups yeah at least the only one that had a hope of having a spot but there mm -hmm. aren't many up here there's just mm -hmm. not i think there was one more in bellevue which is on the other side of haley which mm -hmm. was further away from boondocking it was just a parking lot it looked a little bit better but they were booked and she said i don't know why we're booked this weekend but That's anyways what she said. Yep. for the first time this summer we got to boondock with our friends, um, Dora and Ed, and um, Pee Wee and Martha. Yeah, and we really, really enjoyed being here with Pee Wee mm -hmm. and Martha. We really hope to meet up with you all again. Of course, we really, really enjoyed being here with Dora and Ed. However, you know how this video started. Right. So you know what happened, and that was an ultimate tragedy. Yeah, they 
literally just got here and then that night is when everything happened mm -hmm. so we we met them in courtside got to hang out with them in courtside didn't get yes. to boondock, boondock with them in courtside but we were really looking forward to it yes we were and we're just really um i don't sad just sad and just devastated by what happened um so it's kind of like a bittersweet moment we really enjoyed this area but this area also has a lot of sadness to it because of what happened and i don't know if we've said this already but being here is it's just so different because they were right there next to us and now mm -hmm. their camper's gone and mm -hmm. it's just it, you can't describe what that's like to still be in the same place right. and there's the space yeah because it happened right at the beginning like we just got here monday and they got here tuesday and then it mm -hmm. happened and we were still slated to stay here for two weeks so and now it's our time to go and um one other thing before we get off the subject of this boondocking site we kept seeing last week because when we first got here me and matthew had the whole place to ourselves literally there was one elk hunter in a green oh, tent yeah. And that mm -hmm. was it. Nobody else. So the whole place was empty. And then our friends came in. And then every once in a while, another RV would come mm -hmm. in. I think there was one on the other side of Pee Wee that he's been here about as long as us. And, of course, the elk hunter. But then over the weekend, we started seeing these RVs. And they started coming in. They started clustering. And we knew it was elk hunting season for yeah. what? Arrows? What is that called? For archery. Yeah. Archery. Bow and arrow. Yep. And we're like, man, there are a lot of hunters. <laughs> and they just kept, every day they would add, add, and we're going to try to They didn't get, leave. They just kept coming. And we hope we have footage of this for y'all. And we're like, oh my goodness. So now it was Thursday. They were still coming in. And then yesterday, and I said, well, I hope when we go to our next boondocking site that we're going to be able to find it because this is like a big deal all these hunters because yeah. they were kind of wearing camouflage right so the rangers had stopped at another site to check on the elk hunter and so our friend peewee wanted to find out what was going on so he went down there come to find out all of these rvs are a wedding party <laughs> so there's a is it 4-h yeah. I think there's a 4-H campground just down the road a ways, and they're all here for a wedding party. If I were to guess, I would say there's at least 20 rigs. 20 to 30. And the they, last time I counted, there was like 9 or 10, yeah. and it's more than doubled since then. And they so. really crammed in there. And oh, yeah. We thought they might get all the way down the road. <laughs> it's close, y'all. And now this next little bit, I'm sure the BDR community are not the ones doing this. So if you know somebody and they like to speed down dirt roads maybe you could whisper something in their ear just for us if they happen to see someone camping off the side of the road like we do or walking hiking riding a bike whatever maybe they could slow down and look in their rear view mirror and see how big this massive dust storm is that they're creating so it doesn't assault people like us as they drive by Maybe you can tell that's happened to me a time or two, but just friendly reminder. Yeah, we were having a campfire and we were all like doing the motion of slowing down. And then finally Matthew had enough today because <laughs> they were flying down. He's like, slow down. And it's not just kids, y'all. I'm not going to call out any names or ages, but well, I don't know names, but ages. But there are people of all sorts who are just treating this like it's NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, that dust really travels. It really kicks up, and it's like you wouldn't want that if you were sitting <laughs> outside of your RV. And or cooking outside. Or if you're hiking or riding your bike. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Check the rearview mirror, and that'll show you how big your storm cloud is behind you. <laughs> and one final note is, of course, as we started out this episode, this whole thing is dedicated to our good friend, Ed and his family. So to Dora and the rest of your family, if y'all are watching, we're praying for you. And I don't know if you've seen on our Facebook page, but hundreds of people are praying for you. We've seen on your pages, a lot of people have said that we've got a big family here and you've got a lot of people who care about y'all. So keep on keeping on, keep your head up. We're praying for you and that's not going to stop.